you were asking about has uh, whether you can do SEO on a GoDaddy website. Well, I know you. There's a there's an SEO wizard in there, in GoDaddy. What I'm asking is if anybody in the group has actually done SEO on a GoDaddy site and knows what is behind the wizard because as I po started poking around, it looks like to get through the wizard, you actually have to do the work. And so I don't want to do the work if I'm not going to be hired and paid to do the work and without having done the research to know what to put into the wizard ahead of time too. So I'm kind of torn on if I want to even put together a proposal for this lady or not. Has anybody used this wizard for GoDaddy before? Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of had a feeling that was going to be the uh, answer. But, but here, here's my, so a couple things I want to encourage you with, right? Okay. Right. SEO is really platform agnostic. Right. Right. And so although a lot of us are WordPress people, and a lot of us, you know, even sell WordPress websites, or I know Dave, you're br branching out into a, a second CMS. Um, and because SEO best practices are SEO best practices, regardless of wizards and CMSs, you know. Um, so from my perspective as a provider of SEO, I always tell clients I am platform agnostic. I'm not going to make you build a WordPress website in order to do SEO. And because I don't sell websites, I tell clients, I'm going to get as much out of your website as we possibly can before we have to build a new website. But one of our goals is to be so successful, you're going to need a new website. That's true. And so I... Setting that goal. So if I had a client with a, a site like a GoDaddy wizard based site, I would probably say something in effect of, okay, well, uh, you know, SEO is SEO, so it doesn't really matter. The same truth is true. The same process for queries and answers is going to be true. Set up analytics, do your keyword research, have a keyword focus for every page. This is all basically the same stuff. It's just where we put the thing, blah, blah, right? But right. same order and all that. So, but I will say the client, sometimes these, and I, I got to find a better word. I don't want to say like entry level, but like sometimes these wizard based systems can limit us as they try to be helpful. Yeah. I think that was my big, like not knowing what was next and not knowing if it's like, okay, is it like Yoast where it lays out where you, where, what goes where, or is it more like um, Squarespace or Shopify where you have to really dig or Wix, not Wix, Weebly, where you have to pay to get access to be able to put the data in that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's why I'd set the expectation for the beginning. We can do SEO on this. Absolutely. And I, you know, and I, I would have tell my clients, because I get some really weird CMSs I've never heard of before. Yeah. Um, and I will tell client, I've not used the CMS before, but we can do SEO. And I, I, as a rule, don't try to push people into new websites. Right. But sometimes we hit limits. And we'll hit a limit within the site and we might be max out what we can do at which point the goal would be you're making enough money from our seo campaign to pay for the upgrade gotcha. right okay because we're we remember we want to focus our seo efforts on traffic that leads to customers not rank right right right, right. and if we're putting it in that terms we're 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 setting a value for the client in terms of how much money are you making from what you're paying us and then they're going to find they have a big budget because you're making them money. Whereas they didn't think they were making much money or they thought they had a brochure. And so if we're phrasing it that way and we just set the expectation, we might hit a limit. So for instance, with okay. I, 
I've been exposed to one of my clients is using a Duda for, for their CMS. And Duda does a lot really well, but we've ran into problems with redirects where I add a ton of redirects to websites and all one does this. And I mean, there's a ton of, re and I can't, there's a redirect problem, but I can't download the list and see where the problem is to remove a particular rule to fix it. So we had to submit this to their team and say, all right, like I need to download this because there's a loop in here and I don't know where it is. And until you can let me download this list or uh, Duda's default blog listing, we'll list the top nine posts and then uses JavaScript to show the next set, the next set, but Google can't crawl that. So Google's only able to see the nine most recent posts. Gotcha. So that means we've had to adjust our SEO strategy for more to internal links. But these are building up to the point where we're going to have to tell the client, there's enough issues here that we need to pivot to a WordPress website. But hopefully by that time, the income is coming. So it then becomes a justifiable expense. And so the good news is if someone's starting with a, uh, again, I want to find a better word than entry level. But that's kind of what a GoDaddy site is, right? Yeah. I, I want to find a, maybe you can all help me think of the right word so it doesn't sound condescending. But uh, find a, I, we're we're probably going to hit limits, but we're going to make this last as long as we can. And hopefully by the time we hit the max we can do with this site, we can justify the expense of a new website. And then we got all kinds of really good partners who can build really good websites of varying quality, or a very co varying cost, I would say. And that, so in other words, Stephanie, I would not say no Okay. Someone who's willing to pay for it. And I'm glad you are standing your ground and not doing the SEO for free with the, you know, that's yeah commendable, right? Like this is how we stay in business, right? Um, but I wouldn't turn it down. I would just set the expectation and get that monkey or that cat <laughs> on.